Hi folks, this is going to be a really short video to answer questions I've had about resupply on the hike. As I understand it, resupply is pretty much something you figure out along the way because plans change once you're in the thick of anything. Initially, I thought I'd be creating a room full of prepaid, pre-addressed boxes filled with food and supplies and sent to post offices and hostels along the way. Sounded like a great idea. Based on my shakedown hikes of the first 150 miles of the AT, I've nixed that plan, decided the food can be resupplied easily enough along the trail, eliminating the costs of shipping, and having to make special trips into post offices and towns I might have otherwise decided to bypass completely. I don't really have any dietary concerns that require any special foods that can't be found along the trail, so I know how lucky I am in that regard. There are, however, some supplies, not food related, that if purchased in trail towns or grocery stores might only be sold in bulk or quantities too large for hikers. Those items I will have shipped, but should only need a monthly supply box at best. So here's what I've created at home for my wife to draw upon based on what I tell her I'm needing or getting low on at the moment. And these supplies can easily be tossed in with fresh clothing, shoes, lighter summer gear, that kind of thing. It's nothing more than a few shoebox sized plastic storage bins. Inside will be a half dozen travel sized tubes of toothpaste, a spare travel sized toothbrush, a half dozen hand sanitizers, a half dozen travel sized bottles of Dr. Bronner's unscented bath soap. These were repackaged from one large bottle of Dr. Bronner's. Seven or eight tubes of chapstick with a few feet of Luco tape wrapped around each of them a handful of travel packs of wet wipes, a few more quarter-sized scouring pads that I'll use to clean out my cook pot, two travel-sized deodorants in case I need to get off trail for any length of time, one replacement pot koozie for when the one I have falls apart, which I'm sure is inevitable, some ibuprofen, Hero's earplugs, two more bidets because they sell them in threes, a tube of sunscreen, a tube of gold bond healing aloe, uh, a, few, uh, a few compactor trash bags that I use as pack liners in case mine gets a hole in it, and finally medicine and vitamin supplements. On a section hike last summer, I sent a box to Mountain Crossing. When I got there, I still had enough food in my pack to last the two days it was going to take me to get the Hiawassee, and I didn't need anything in the box. Like most hikers, I packed my fears, and evidently I'm afraid of going hungry. So I gave my food away to some homeless couple sitting by the highway that I later found out were just hikers themselves. Really hard to tell the difference sometimes. So this simple little supply plan is all the plan I have, and like all plans, I'm sure it'll change based on real-time experiences once I get on the trail. If you have any suggestions on what I should add or eliminate from this shoebox, post a comment and let me know. I'm really open for suggestions here. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you on the trail real soon.